today we are here to talk about the top 10 biggest surprises from Tesla. So stick with me and let's drive. All right, so at this point, the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y are two of the most popular selling cars in this country and the world. So there's not a whole lot that's not really understood or known about them. But I did actually go and collect a bunch of things that new Tesla owners uh, that I talked to found surprising about their Tesla. So today I'm gonna to share all of those with you and teach you about all of the things that you may not know at this point about Tesla and all of the features that maybe you haven't found yet or uh, haven't been publicized elsewhere. So let's go check those out. So let's just start with a couple of features here that aren't that widely publicized, but are incredibly helpful in normal day-to-day -day driving. And these are actually things that showcase the power of software updates that Tesla offers, because when I first got this car, they weren't available. Let's check them out. All right, so one great feature that was added uh, relatively recently as part of an over-the-air update is having the blind spot camera come up when you put your turn signal on. So you can enable this in the settings and essentially now when I put on my turn signal, you can see I get this nice camera view here of my blind spot. And I can actually even drag and move this around if I find it to be in the way, right over there. And this works in both directions. So pretty cool capability using the cameras that are all around the car for autopilot and sentry mode and all of those other features. Another awesome feature that kind of goes under uh, noticed and uh, reported is uh, the ability for the car to actually read signs, uh, including the speed limit, and then display it to you. So I love knowing exactly what the speed limit is, even on roads where it's not you know, posted super well, or places where it might change uh, based on different conditions, times of day, things like that. Places where there's you know, construction and other uh, changes that may not be reported on maps and things. So having that available just makes it uh, easier and safer drive. Safety feature here is that when you are on autopilot, which as opposed to a lot of other car manufacturers where you can only activate the hands-free uh, stuff on mapped roads and stuff, here I can do it anywhere, even kind of on uh, local roads. It will actually detect emergency vehicles uh, by their lights and uh, slow you down automatically. So we'll give this a test here. Um, yeah, we can go this way. But I've seen this before on both highways and surface streets where based off of the uh, lights, it will proactively slow you down um, to be safe with emergency vehicles. Construction up ahead, let's see if it detects this and slows us down at all. Although there are no lights here now. Oh yes, we have lights right here, let's see. And no. Another awesome thing in here is that, you know, for a relatively, I don't know if I'd say affordable car, I mean, this isn't like, a, you know, at the um, entry level or anything like that. It's a uh, fa fairly pricey car, but um, doesn't uh, exactly like stand out in uh, compared to some of the competitors and stuff like that. Uh, you get a really nice sound system in here. So they're um, in, in the Model 3 and the Y for relatively affordable, you know, kind of mid-market cars, you're getting a very nice sound system with multiple speakers kind of all surrounding you, uh, good bass, and between the HD radio and uh, just the streaming options that you have in here, and of course the ability to uh, stream Bluetooth from your phone, uh, it really sounds fantastic in here and I think is the best sounding uh, speaker system I've ever had in a car. Now I'm not sure like it compares you know that well to um, some of the like premium audio upgraded systems that you might find in like you know Volvo, BMW, Mercedes, um, uh, ones like that. But um, uh, compared to like any other kind of you know mid-level car, this speaker system is uh, just absolutely better and. Um, uh, uh, head and above um, some of the other options out there. All right, now another awesome feature here that was uh, only added about a less than a year ago or so and kind of came over from the full self-driving beta is it will actually detect and notify you through a ding when the light turns green. 
All right, and it can be sort of buggy. Didn't work at all right there. Don't know if that's because we're behind a bunch of cars or I've noticed that it doesn't always work where you have a uh, turn arrow that's different from the other green lights. But there, that light, they actually both turn green at the same time. So it seems like it just didn't work. We'll give it another try. But this is a great feature uh, just to help you not be one of those people that is sitting there not paying attention to the light and holding up the rest of traffic. So I wish this feature would come to uh, all other cars too because I've noticed lately especially people just sit there at the light and especially around here where our lights are relatively short uh, it means you lose almost half of the time for either turning or uh, just getting going at some of these lights here. So let's see if we have some more success at this one. All right here's our test. Will we get a green light ding? No! Have I turned the feature off? What's going on? I verified that the green light chime feature is enabled, so let's see if we have any more luck here. Oh, there we go! A little slow though. So another thing that a lot of people told me that kind of surprised them about their Tesla, and I guess uh, EVs in general, is that range anxiety is actually much less of a thing than they thought it was going to be. And it essentially goes away after just a, a road trip or two. So I found that, you know, when I was new to my Tesla, the very first time we took a trip, I was constantly checking, you know, uh, our state of charge percent, how many miles it estimated us to have back uh, uh, remaining, um, how much range we were going to have to uh, get to places, and uh, just being worried about that constantly, like we were going to run out or something. And of course that never happened. And so after just a couple of times driving around, uh, that has completely gone away, and especially with Tesla's supercharging network, I really don't worry about the availability of chargers or like having to run out of charge or anything like that anymore. So usually just hop in the car and go and don't give it a second thought anymore these days. Another thing you'll notice as a Tesla driver is that unlike a lot of other unique brands of cars, Tesla drivers don't actually ever wave at each other. So let's see here. Yep, nothing. So if you're coming from a Jeep or a Mini or any other car where the drivers have some sort of you know, camaraderie with each other, you are not gonna find it here in a Tesla. I've tried to start the Tesla wave all around town and nine times out of 10, I get absolutely nothing. And the one out of 10 times I get something, it's usually just a confused look before they reflexively uh, wave back. I don't think I've ever gotten an unsolicited wave from another Tesla at any point. No wave there. People have told me they were very pleasantly surprised by uh, and something that surpassed their expectations with Tesla is just how fantastic and reliable and available uh, and well-maintained the Tesla supercharging network is. So I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that Tesla is head and above uh, pretty much any other charging network, uh, especially the nationwide ones that are available on other cars. And it's a big reason that so many other brands are now switching to the Tesla uh, charging standard and going to be able to use their uh, infrastructure. But even with that, people have been uh, very pleasantly surprised with just how many chargers are available uh, kind of throughout the entire country along all of the major uh, interstate corridors, even locally around places. And even for people that uh, where charging is difficult or impossible at their homes and uh, their, their work, uh, being able to use the supercharging network to keep their car charged up on a regular basis uh, is no problem at all for them. And it's really just to the point where it is so available, so easy, so well integrated into the car that you don't even have to think about it at all, uh, honestly, when you're road tripping. So I've gotten to the point now where, you know, I'm the kind of person that likes to plan every single thing out. I like to know the options. I want to optimize down to the exact minute and stuff. So like I'll do some uh, kind of advanced scouting and research on where the chargers are along a route that I might be taking on a road trip just to make sure I'm getting you know, a fast charger, one that uh, doesn't add too much time to uh, you know, detour to from my route, uh, and potentially one that has you know, good food, restaurant, uh, um, restroom options uh, too. But honestly, there are times now where we go on a trip and I don't even look at all ahead of time and just let the car figure it out for us and we never have any sort of problem at all. Even if we get to one and it's uh, slower than we expected or there's some sort of problem with it or uh, there is a wait because uh, more and more cars are starting to use them, 
uh, we just go to the next one and they're usually right along the route and really don't add time at all. So fantastic to have that and just shows the massive strength of the charging network. Another feature on here that I've actually been pleasantly surprised by is the automatic headlights, uh, bright lights uh, at night. And so uh, even though I complain constantly about the camera-based uh, vision system in here, uh, as opposed to the like uh, combination of radar and uh, ultra wideband sensors that they removed, uh, and I thought were much better in my old Model 3 than this newer Model Y, um, the headlights themselves actually do work pretty well. So the uh, even though the windshield wipers are an absolute dumpster fire and horrible feature that I have to turn off constantly and battle with because they automatically turn back on whenever you use autopilot, uh, and there's no way to uh, just set a speed beyond like the three preset ones that they give you that are not fine-tuned enough. Um, the headlights actually work fairly well, I would say, uh, and people have told me that they actually do come to rely on them and trust them more than they thought that they would. So the way that this works is based off of the cameras, uh, it'll actually turn the high beams on at night and then shut them off whenever it detects that another car uh, is coming towards you or that you might be blinding somebody. And I found this actually works like probably 90 plus percent of the time. Uh, and even though sometimes it feels like it's a little bit late and you're worried that uh, you're about to get flashed by somebody, it does always seem to get it kind of just in the nick of time. So I definitely appreciate that feature. And even though it probably gives you more anxiety than it should, uh, and that it's worth, uh, I actually do start, uh, I have started using it a little bit more at night now uh, and relying a little bit more on it. All right, well, another great feature here is camp mode. And you may never think about this or think that you might need it until the day that you actually do need it. So camp mode is great because it allows you to leave the uh, power on in the car, keep the climate running, and stay comfortable in here overnight while you're camping. And I have found this to be extremely useful because we camped two nights out of the back of our car in Shenandoah National Park. And we've also camped here in the backyard out of the trunk of the car. And in case you want to learn more about that, I'll link the description down below so you can see how we camp from the back of the Tesla. But having camp mode is a game changer for those camping trips where you can basically use the car as a RV if you really want to. And I found that you can fit a pretty large size uh, mattress in here, like air mattress. You can fit two people at least side by side in here comfortably. And it is great for being able to stay cool, comfy, dry, or warm enough, depending on when you're camping and where, all within the car itself. Climate. One of the absolute best things about having an EV, and a Tesla in particular, because I think Tesla does this better than any other EV manufacturer out there right now, except maybe Rivian, who's kind of close, even though they're lacking some of these features. Uh, but the cool thing is, since the car is basically always on, same way your phone is, uh, and you don't have like an ignition and you're not running a combustion engine and putting out any sort of exhaust or fumes or anything, you can basically have the car run whenever you want and as long as you want, as long as you've got power. So from the climate here, I can keep the climate on at any point, uh, even if I get out of the car, which is great for running in to do errands and coming back out to a nice cool or warm car. Uh, I also have dog mode here, which is uh, absolutely fantastic when we are traveling around with our wonderful mutt and need to keep the car comfortable and safe for him. So this will actually pop up a little message here when I get out. And it'll show on the screen that dog mode is on. It'll show the exact temperature in here so that people know uh, if they see a dog in here without a person that the dog is safe and comfortable. And I'll even get uh, notifications on my phone in case the temperature is going outside of a safe range so that I know to come immediately back and make sure that there's no problem. So this is absolutely fantastic for keeping our pooch cool and comfortable and safe. And then camp mode here will allow me to basically just leave this on with the climate running so that in case I want to camp out here in the car, I'm going to be nice and comfortable as well. Advantages with an EV and being able to just have the climate control and other accessories on all the time. It's actually a phenomenal place to uh, rest, take a nap, or just sit and wait while you're waiting for something else to happen while you're in the car. 
So when we're running errands and somebody else from the family needs to run inside and the rest of us are hanging out in here, it's great that we can stay parked and keep our climate on so that the car is nice and comfortable uh, without having to be uh, idling the car and spewing out fumes and pollutants and whatever else. Um, it's also great when we're charging that we can just sit in here and stay comfortable. And uh, we found that even just kind of heading out and running around town, uh, being able to have somebody hop out, keep the car comfortable, uh, even while we're out of the car, and then come back to a nice climate-adjusted car, uh, cabin, climate-adjusted cabin, is absolutely fantastic and makes it so much nicer to run errands around in here, even in the hot, hot summer. This is also the only car that I've ever considered really sleeping in. Uh, I've taken a couple of quick naps while charging at some points, and like I mentioned before, we've actually camped out in this car and I've slept in the trunk and was quite comfortable. And being able to have a climate controlled cabin, uh, even in the trunk, uh, is absolutely fantastic for camping. If we had been sitting outside in a tent or a cabin even, we would have been so hot, probably would have been damp uh, because it was a really rainy time while we were there. And instead we were able to just stay here in the car nice and cool and stay dry. So fantastic for that and has changed the way that I approach camping now. All right, so one of the things that my kids absolutely love in here, um, in addition to all of the other little toy box features you have in here, are this boom box and emissions. And so emissions uh, basically utilizes the surround sound system in here and lets you make uh, whoopee cushion noises at any corner of the car. So it sounds like whoever's sitting there is the one emitting those emissions. Mm. And can also do it from outside of the car too. You can do these outside of the car utilizing the speaker that's built uh, on the exterior of the car as a pedestrian warning system. And then the other great feature that you can use with this external speaker is the boombox and megaphone. So with megaphone, I can uh, amplify the sound of my own voice from the microphone in here and play it over the speakers. Just like sure, this. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I sound like that. And you can even use this as a external speaker for tailgating or camping or any other time you just want to share your music with the outside world. Not bad. And you can also do different horn sounds this way too. Well, I never. That can be a fun way to kind of customize your Tesla. Uh, make yourself known out there and have a little bit of fun with people on the outside of the car too. All right, and one of the other best features about this is the Tesla phone app. So a lot of other manufacturers have a phone app that a lot of them are super buggy, unreliable, and don't have very many features, and they don't get updated very often and kind of degrade and go away. But the Tesla one is the exception and is absolutely phenomenal. So, so I have so many different abilities from here for starters, I can control various aspects of the car, like locking and unlocking it. I can even close the trunk if I forgot to do so when leaving the car. That's come in handy many times as we are walking away. I can open the trunk from here, lock and unlock it. I can control the climate, which is absolutely phenomenal to be able to go walk right up to a car that is uh, already heated or cooled to exactly what I want. You can also use this as a way to uh, enable um, camp mode, dog mode, uh, even defrost the car remotely without having to actually be there. You can also use this just to make sure that it doesn't exceed a certain temperature. So you can see I can set overheat protection to 90, 95, or 100. And I can even vent the windows from here. So phenomenal capabilities and means that this is a fantastic app um, and probably one of the best ones out there. Makes using and owning a Tesla just all the easier. I can even see where the car is from here. I can do routing and send directions to it. Um, 
and send addresses uh, wirelessly to it so that when I hop in the car, it's all ready to go with navigation. And of course I can use my phone as a key to open, unlock, and uh, get the car going, which means I don't have to carry a physical key around with me, which is great. You can even control media and playback controls from here. You can also control charging, turning it on and off remotely, setting schedules, and I can even view charging stats like how much power I've used and how much it's cost me. All right, well, if you lock yourself in the trunk of the car, there's apparently no trunk release button. So I don't recommend that because you have to crawl all the way to the front of the car. The screen doesn't just turn on by itself. You have to push the brake pedal to turn it back on and then open the door to power the car on. And only then can you hit the trunk open button. Uh, so don't do that. I'm very hot now. All right, well, I hope you found all of those surprising and incredibly useful in day-to-day -day life features of the Tesla useful and interesting. Useful. If so, please do like and don't be afraid to ring that bell so that you don't miss any other content coming soon. I'd be thrilled if you subscribe, even if you never watch another single video of this, just because it helps me grow the channel and uh, would be greatly appreciated. So these were some of the best features and surprise uh, parts of owning a Tesla that I was able to collect and gather from some of my fellow owners that I talked to out there. If I missed any, please let me know in the comments below what are your favorite things that maybe you weren't expecting or came as a surprise uh, when you got your Tesla or other EV. With that, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you out there on the road.